Now you can also import from what we call an ODBC database, uh, such as SQL Server or Oracle or many others out there. It's really the industry standard. So ODBC means Open Database Connectivity, and most of your larger databases are ODBC compliant, and we can import those into Access. Now you may have to coordinate this with your IT team. Uh, your IT team has to put something on your computer that's called an ODBC driver. Uh, if you don't know what that is, they'll, they'll help you out with that. The, the ODBC driver is a bridge between Access and the other database, and it's a necessary component. So this example assumes that you already have an ODBC database uh, driver on your computer, which I do here. Now, when you do this, of course, you'll have different uh, ODBC table names and uh, uh, the usernames and passwords will be different, but the steps that I'm gonna show you here should be pretty similar. So first of all, we're gonna pick on external data and we'll pick on ODBC database. Uh, so again, when you import, that's gonna make a new table in Access that will be independent of the ODBC data source. However, if you link, that means if you change the data in Access, it'll also change it in your ODBC data source or vice versa. Now, that can vary depending on how your IT team has the ODBC driver set up. All right, so in this case, we're gonna pick on import. In fact, when you link, I would really coordinate that with your IT team to make sure that you're not gonna overlay production data. I'm sure they will be happy with that. Uh, you wanna really make sure you coordinate all of this with your IT team. So I'm gonna pick on import and pick on okay. Now, when you do this, most of yours are gonna be under machine data source, okay? And you're gonna have a different list than I have here because people give them different names, you have different sources, but they really should all work the same way. So I'll pick on SQL Server that I have on my computer. I'll pick on okay. Now that ODBC data source is gonna have a login ID and a password. So again, you're gonna coordinate with your uh, IT team and they'll give you the login ID and password that's appropriate for your needs. And I'll click on okay. Now these are all the tables within that ODBC data source. So again, you're gonna have different tables than I have here. So you can pick as many as you wanted to. I really could pick more than one there. Uh, I'm gonna say deselect all and I'll pick on this one that's called DBO orders. Uh, I'll click on okay. And now it just imported that table. I can save the import steps if I wanted to. The reason that you would do that is if you think you're gonna use that same import in the future you would save the import steps and then reduce the process down to one or two steps instead of going through that entire wizard each time. I'm gonna pick on close here. And notice how I have a new table called DBO orders, and it's just like any other table now, except we imported that from an ODBC data source. So you're gonna coordinate that with your IT team. They're gonna insert um, your ODBC driver onto your computer if it's not already there, and they're gonna give you your username and your password and also the tables that are important for your needs. Once you do that, you're gonna pick on external data, pick on ODBC database. All right, typically I'll do an import, but link is also uh, useful as well. And I'll click on okay. And then usually I'll pick a machine data source here and then pick the one that's appropriate and then go from there.